Hey guys and welcome to the show. My name is Pascal and today we will do another episode of Watch Hunting on Chrome 24. In the comments of the last episode with Jenny L, you asked for Adrian from Bark and Check. And what can I say? He's here today. I'm really excited to see what he will catch. So let's bring him in. Hi Adrian, how are you doing? Hey Pascal. Hey guys, yeah, I'm good. How are you doing? Great, perfect. Um, so are you hungry for, for watches? <laughs> Yeah, always hungry for watches, especially if you're buying, which I, I've, I've been told yeah, that's I get true. to keep what, what I choose, so <laughs> I'm happy. Cool, then um, let's uh, start with um, a check. What are you wearing today? Because I know the community will ask that anyways if we don't do it, so um, show us the watch on your wrist. I'm wearing my Explorer, uh, it's a 22-year-old Explorer. 36 millimeter. Oh, it's dirty as anything. Let me get my wipe. They're pretty cool. Is it the, the uh, 36? So uh? 36 millimeter, yeah. So it's, it's an old one. I should probably change it. It's, I'm going to change it because it's going to be a bit noisy for. I'm wearing my um, new Omega Seamaster. It's not <laughs> so it's a, a no, wristwatch noisy. change and not a wristwatch check, <laughs> what we just <laughs> yeah. did. White Omega Seamaster, that's what I have on. It's not as noisy as the, as the Explorer. What are you wearing? I'm, I'm wearing the Royal Oak, the 15450O, and some other numbers <laughs> um, with the, <laughs> with the <laughs> silver dial, but it's the 15450O ST. Yeah. So that's maybe also a watch you could, uh, could uh, hunt today, because uh, let's start with round one, I would say. Um, right. And hunt number one would be um, you would have to hunt for watches between 15k and 30k US dollars. So in this price range, you would have to hunt for three watches. And um, the restriction, so to say, or the tricky part would be you as a Rolex, Rolex uh, fanboy, uh, you are only allowed <laughs> to, to pick one Rolex watch. So that's the only cool. catch on this one. And the time is uh, five minutes. And I will have a modern digital timer here. So I will... <laughs> the irony of us <laughs> using iPhones to, to time. So I would say we are ready. Are you ready? Cool. cool. I'm ready. So let's start. This actually feels like a race. Men's watches. The internet's not quick enough. Come on. Minimum price. Right. 15,000. 30,000. What's the first brand that comes into your mind? <laughs> um, there's... Uh, in this price, I'd, I actually go straight to a watch that I really want. Um, and that is the Vacheron Constantin Overseas. The problem is, it's nice when you don't have to actually, or you can't actually buy the watch. Because you don't have to decide on which bezel, uh, which dial color you would get because um, it's it's tricky between the blue dial and yeah. the gray black so this is a, this is the dual time this is one that I want hmm. uh, it's just in budget but it comes in a blue dial so um, as well that's an interesting pick uh, yeah I think uh, that's well that's my first one done the next watch is let's go for the Rolex let's get the one out the way um, I want a gold Rolex, hmm. kind of a really Day -day. obnoxious. Um, I think I'd go bigger than that. I'd, I'm thinking gold sports watch, like maybe it'd have to be a Daytona. It, 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 I want it to be as obnoxious as possible. <laughs> Where am I going? Rolex. I like uh, I like old gold when gold starts to um, patina. Mm. So you would yeah, prefer yeah. pre-owned? Pre-owned, yeah, most yeah. definitely pre-owned, yeah. Wow, it's amazing. The steel Daytona, thirty thousand uh, dollars. Let's dial this in to Daytona. So we have two minutes. Two minutes? Oh, are you kidding no, me? No, two minutes are over, so you have three left. Oh, okay, fine. That's enough. Right, I'm just going to be quick. Then the first full gold Daytona. Uh, what? That's five hundred dollars over budget, but I'm very confident we could negotiate <laughs> and get at least five hundred and fifty dollars off that. 
so I'm going to add that to my list anyway. Whenever I buy a watch, I always go over budget anyway, so this um, <laughs> budgets are just a guide. So next, I, I think we should have a a, um, a dress watch. And but isn't the Daytona dressy as well? It's quite elegant in gold, don't you think? No, that's going to be my daily. My daily, <laughs> daily. Watch. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm thinking something um, Langer. I think that would be oh. quite cool. Maybe in rose gold oh. then. <laughs> to make it even rose more dressy. Gold. Yep. Or in platinum. I don't want to influence you. So. <laughs> Let's see what comes up. If you had more time to, to check the watch, what would be the first thing that you check when buying buying a watch is it obviously the image but then what what are you checking what are the uh, details that are important for you yeah it's 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 looking at what the actual package is for sale um so obviously you're going to get the watch but then what else is going on how old is the watch when if it's relatively old has it been looked after has it been serviced um has a service been done by a watchmaker or by the brand um, so it's, I guess it's kind of like when you buy a car, you want to look at the service history of mm. the car. So box and papers. Um, yeah, box and papers and, and all that stuff. Uh, oh, so it's, uh, I'm just going to have to choose one because we're going to run out of time. We have four uh, let's minutes. Go, let's go for something clean. Yep, yeah, that'll do. Cool. I must be running out of time. It's a good choice. So just add it to the notepad. Then we have three watches and I can stop the first round and it's within budget <laughs> just about <laughs> <laughs> just about job done yes cool okay so we've got three cool then we can and go before. to the notepad yeah perfect let's go to the notepad so we so, have a three watch collection look at that that is one hell of a three watch collection happy with it I, I, I want all three of those so what would be what would be the daily? Isn't it that uh, overseas would be the daily? <laughs> yeah, the overseas would be the daily. It's it's a, a strong watch, integrated bracelet. It comes with uh, a leather strap and a rubber rubber strap as well. Actually, I um, thought you maybe go for the Royal Oak instead, but you picked the overseas over the Royal Oak. Yeah, oh, I just feel like the Royal Oak, a bit like Rolex, Royal Oak. Um, and the Nautilus, mm. they kind of get a lot of attention. And I think it's quite fun to have um, the one that isn't always in the limelight. I like the fact that you could wear this watch and nobody will know what it is. Unless you're a watch geek, you could wear it anywhere. And now people will just think it's just a big steel watch as opposed to a nearly $30,000 yeah, watch. That's a good point. Um, whereas the opposite can be said for the <laughs> yellow gold Daytona. <laughs> Everyone's going to recognize that. Um, and quite blingy. Yeah, you can. It's very blingy. But I, I like the old gold. Gold uh, when it's been around for a bit, it gets all these micro scratches, and then it's it's not so shiny. Uh, it's obviously recognisably gold, but it's. I think the blinginess gets reduced when it's pre-owned because you you just get these worn in um, marks all over it, and I think that's that's really nice. Mm. And the Lange is just pretty elegant and classy. Yeah. And that would that would be a very clean dress watch, and uh, in platinum, it's it's very classy. You can't really complain about anything with this. It's it's not obnoxious. It's just, I mean, look at those numerals. Those numerals are amazing. So it looks like a Lovely. perfect free watch collection, I have to say. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited to get these. You're very I would also have picked the the Lange. I have to say. My watch would be maybe Lange, Daytona and the Royal Oak. So not too far away yeah. from your picks, I have to say. Cool. So this was the first round. Um, great picks, I have to say. A daily, um, a special watch, a gold one and a dress watch. So let's move on to round number two. And the second time would be um, hunting for three alternatives to models um, from the hunt number one. So basically a Daytona, uh, Overseas and uh, Lange. Um, alternative and they should be um, cheaper than 15k so cheaper than the watches you just picked or the, the price categories and you again have five minutes 
Does that sound uh, challenging enough? <laughs> It does, yeah. I'm trying to think. <laughs> okay, so I will start the timer. And are you ready? Yeah. Is your bezel set ready? Bezel set. Cool. Then let's start. So I'm going to start off with the blingy watch. So something to a cheaper alternative to the Daytona. Mm -hmm. And I know this is definitely going to be under budget. Um, it's just whether or not I can get there quick enough. <laughs> so I'm thinking about the, the Tudor steel and gold ah, chronograph. Okay. Interesting. Come on. Tudor, 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 Tudor. So this should be uh, way under budget. Luckily. Yeah, definitely. Unless you buy um, 10 of them. <laughs> I could buy a whole, whole collection of them. Um, brand Tudor, not under 40 euros. Case size, let's add another filter. Let's do a chronograph filter. Why is it the, the Tudor? Uh, because I think, uh, I guess part of the, the purpose of that watch is to be quite blingy. Mm. So no, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to change my mind. Um, <laughs> I'm, rather than doing a Tudor, I'm going to do a Glass Hooter original. Oh, okay. Was it my question Glass that Hooter changed your mind? <laughs> oh, no, it wasn't. No, it's, uh, if I'm going to go for blingy and we have 15,000 to play with, we should be able to get a CQ Panorama date in bicolor, which is an awesome watch. Let's type up here, CQ Panorama date, sweet. Might be, oh, look at that, perfect, cool, job done. 11,840, this is a brilliant and blingy watch. So this is my, where's it gone, it's here. This to replace the Daytona. So it's got a nice bit of gold. It's it's more subtly blingy, but um, it's that's awesome. Uh, to replace the overseas travel time, we're going to go with just the overseas, which should be remarkably cheaper. Especially, I think Generation Two is still. Um, oh, okay. Second generation is still a good-looking watch, but it is far cheaper. That's a, that's a yeah. clever move, I have to say. <laughs> I was tempted to get one of these um, by selling my Kermit. Hmm. So you can get the, the really old ones. Oh, these are 24 millimeter. There's, I think, a 37 millimeter, which is really, really quite, I'm going to say affordable, but um, more affordable. Let's see, high to low. <clears throat> So the downside to getting a Vacheron, even though it's um, uh, you can find them at sensible prices, is the servicing costs are extortionate. So you go for the white dial or blue dial here? I think this is what I'd go for. A white dial, I can't tell if that's a first or second gen, but regardless, it's in budget and super cool. Perfect. So we have two and three minutes. Three minutes, awesome, cool. So the dress watch is without doubt going to be a JLC. I don't know which one, I'm just going to see what we can get for our money. So it's interesting how you pick them. Your alternatives are not alternatives in terms of the same designs or homage watches, but you're looking more for the categories, right? So a blingy watch yeah. or a dress watch alternative. Not necessarily the same yeah. or similar design, right? And, and in my head, I, I kind of feel like there's, uh, if you have a three watch collection, for me, that's the kind of points that they should hit is you should have your dressy watch. I don't have any of these, but you should have your dressy watch. You should have your daily bash about watch. What we're doing, JLC. Have your daily bash about watch and then have a watch that you kind of feel like is, is a bit, um, not necessarily flashy, but something that just feels cool. For me, my Kermit was my watch that kind of feels cool. Um, I guess it's it still the watch that feels cool. Did I understand it right that you would trade the Kermit for the, the overseas? 
Oh, yes. I, I did think about that for a long time, um, but then I, I looked into the ongoing costs of having an overseas and servicing is, I think the, the standard service for an overseas is something like 1200 pounds, 1200 pounds, which is uh, a lot of cash. So regardless of how much it costs to actually buy the watch itself, the ongoing costs are very high. And you checked the, the value development maybe of the, the Kermit. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's the other thing is, is, is the Kermit will go up in price, the overseas will go down in price. Is that something that matters for you? If it's like a good invest, so to say, because that's a question that's quite controversial amongst the community, I think. Um, it, it is. It, it's not emotionally. It's not important for me emotionally, but it's important for me uh, when it comes to logic and being sensible. It's like buying a house. You can buy... You can think of your dream house and it will have, I don't know, eight bedrooms, four garages and, and whatever, but it's got to be in the right place. You don't want to drop a lot of money on a house and it's in a place that you know is going to go down in value or it's going to have um, some big development is going to build, be built next to it and so it will devalue the property. The, for me, I'm, I'm not a particularly wealthy guy, so for me, I have to be sensible with my money. I'm, I'm comfortable buying these kinds of watches but I do have to think long term. And again, it's like buying a car. You don't want to buy a car that you just think is nice. You have to think, well, is, is this a reliable car? Is it going to function? Or am I going to have to spend a couple of thousand pounds every year fixing stuff? Um, so it's more important the more the watch, uh, watch costs. Yeah, and, and I, th I think when you're buying a watch of, of these, um, these levels, I, I do think you have to take into consideration the ongoing costs of them. That is lovely. I'm getting a. Oh no, here we go, here we go. This is it. This reverso. That's going to so be. So again, my, right within the budget. <laughs> within budget. And that is lovely. Yeah, with the blue details, it's really cool. I did a, a, a brief video on, on one of these uh, a couple of years ago. No, a year ago. And it is. Absolutely stunning. Cool, yeah, so that's, yeah, so that's it. it. Let's that's add that to my thing. And it seems and to be in great condition if you check the images. Looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks looks uh, like it's got everything with it. If you even, they haven't lost the uh, little pusher for the new face. Oh, it's 2020, so that's brand new. Cool, great. So let's go to the notepad and check your, your pics again. So these are my three alternatives to um, so you're right, I've, I've gone with the feelings that the watch gives me as opposed to trying to find an alternative to an overseas or a Daytona. Um, so my my dress watch now is a JLC Reverso Tribute Moon Duo Steel Duo, which is a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> I would change that strap. I'd get a nice brown strap on there, but um, the watch head is, is the most important part. I think every strap Why? would look nice on this one. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's one of those watches that just works. So we have the um, JLC, the Reverso. We have the Washington Concentra Overseas. And we have the Glasfute um, Panorama Date. Great. So the daily would be, yeah. in this case, would be the The daily the would be the Overseas, for sure. Um, it's, it's, it's a solid watch. And it, it's going to feel really nice on the wrists. I've not tried it on. I think it's a 39. Um, I don't think it's quite... I don't think it's a massive watch. I'm just trying to have a look here. Uh, so there, yeah, the daily would be the overseas and then um, the glass feature original. Oh, that's a 42, so that's a chunky thing. Ah, oh, sorry, it'll be fine. Um, and then the glass feature original will just be that, that fun kind of, I don't know, there's something cool about wearing a watch with um, gold in it that suits being worn with jeans and a jumper. <laughs> and a yeah, top and I like the, the gold details. It's really subtle, like with the, um, Black Bay, for example, these rolled, rose gold um, details on the hands, for example, it's pretty cool. And same with, with this one here. I think the rose gold gives it a nice warm, warm touch. Absolutely. Great. Cool. So I would say it's now um, time for the ultimate highlight of the collection, um, the Grail watch. So the last round would be the Grail watch pick. So I would like to tell you <laughs> that you can now pick your absolute grail watch um, there's no limit in in budget the only thing would be that now the time you have to pick it would only be two minutes <laughs> so that could be a bit tricky 
Um, That's so fine. I, I know what I'd get. That's fine. That's easy. Okay. So um, then I would say we are good to go. Now I'm curious what you will pick. <laughs> cool. This is let, be me, let me let me um, oh, right. write it. Let me write it down what I think you will pick, and then I will oh, okay. beforehand, and then I will show it to you. Okay. I'm ready. Sweet. And ready. Cool. So this is going to be the Rolex Explorer 14270 Blackout. I hope they have one. <laughs> if they don't, then uh, they have one. <laughs> okay, cool. Good. Fine. Well, that's all we need. So this, this is a really special, my favorite watch in my collection and one of my favorite watches of all time is the Rolex Explorer. Uh, and this is a blackout version. Okay, interesting. What, what's special about the, the blackout version? So if you look at the, the 369, on the normal Explorer, um, it's white, it has white paint in it. Um, and the, the new Explorers have uh, luminescent material in there. For one year, from uh, 1990 to 1991, Rolex created this, which is a blackout dial, and it has black paint in the 369. So they are very, very rare. So really, um, really and they're, they're just super cool. It's just a normal Explorer. Everything is exactly the same as all the other 14270s, uh, but it just has the black paint in the dial. And annoyingly, when I got my Explorer one, about four years ago, I think now, uh, the blackout dials were going for about six thousand pounds, oh, and I thought, nah, it's too exp too expensive. I'm, I'm, I'm not. It's not worth that much. <laughs> so now the collectors now, are aware of it, and that's why the price now, has gone up. Maybe. Exactly. Um, th there's only one on the whole of Chrono Twenty Four, so that just shows how um, how rare these things are. And I think it just looks sexy with those black numerals. It, it has a darker, more stealthy look about it. But well, pretty interesting because I wrote down what I thought was will be your pick. <laughs> I wrote down the Explorer, the, the 1016. I'm, I oh, was not really? sure if you if you owned it. I was not sure because you talked about it um, yeah. in one of your previous videos or in your older videos, and I thought uh, that the Explorer 1016 will your will be your. Yeah, the 1016 is, is cool. And I think, I, I used to love the 1016, but I think I've just had my Explorer for so long that I now, my eyes now feel like my Explorer is how an Explorer should look. And so the 1016 looks a bit too, um, uh, if I could afford this, then I'd have a 1016 as well. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I could have a whole collection of Explorers. I think they're, I think they're awesome. My second guess would have been the that you pick a 5711 because of the, um, latest news. Of course, yeah. But was it? That would be the best investment. Yeah, uh, and you would not buy it um, solely as an in invest. I'd buy it as an investment. If I had the money, most definitely I'd buy it as an investment because it's it's one of those things that's very few things, very few investments are sure things. Uh, but uh, if Patek's going to discontinue the 511, then. But you can sk uh, still the uh, get the the rose gold one. Maybe this would be. That's a good point. Yeah, I would swap the Daytona for the rose gold. So a great looking notepad. Was it difficult for you? It was difficult because it's like when you hear people going on TV shows and they say it's easy to answer the TV show questions when you're the audience. But then when you're in the seat, it's harder to answer the quiz show questions. And that's what it felt like here. My, my brain, especially when you said uh, to find an alternative for the watches that I've just chosen. My brain was throwing out all these ideas of what what options there can be um, because there are a lot of options, especially if you remove Rolex or remove your common brand that you go to. Um, what I usually do is I, I go in and I just set loose parameters. So I'll set um, the price. So, for example, I'll look at how much my Kermit can sell for and then I'll put like five thousand pounds either side of that um, that budget and then I'll just hit like men's watches or dive watches or very loose parameters and I'll just scroll I'll just keep scrolling and just and that's how I came across the um, the overseas I, I was amazed that you can actually get an over a watch of that level for the price of a submariner um, so yeah I, I, I find it quite fun doing that 
So Adrian, the, the notepad looks awesome. I think these are all great picks. Um, thanks for hunting watches with us. It was a pleasure and really it was fun. Thanks, it was fun for me. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Time and thanks guys. Thanks for watching our video. Please let us know in the comments below um, what your hunts are in the three categories of 15 to 30K and what would be your personal grade watch. It would be really interesting to read that in the comments. And feel free to check out Adrian's collection as well in our watch collection that you can find via the link in the description below. To not miss these videos, please subscribe to our channel, guys. See you in a bit. Until then, enjoy your watches. Goodbye, Adrian. See you later, Pascal. See you later, guys.